Welcome back to Introduction to Programming using C++. My name is Alex Louie. And what I want to talk about today are errors. And I say that with a hint of dreadfulness. Because we all know that as programmers, you're going to make mistakes. Three types of errors that I'm going to go over today, and I'll show you examples. Compiler errors. Runtime errors. And the dreaded and ugly logic errors and I say dreaded and ugly because the logic errors are the most difficult to catch and guess what they're your errors they're logic errors because you've made a mistake that's why it's really pretty difficult to catch because if you don't know what you're doing then the compiler is gonna give you these logic errors which really aren't gonna be flagged as errors you will only really see them when you see the output Let's go back to the beginning. Let's talk about compiler errors. Now, think about compiler errors like rules of the language. So if you're taking an English course or a Spanish course, the languages themselves have different rules for sentence structure. For example, if I was going to talk Spanish, quiero un taco or quiero un poco de comida. Those of you that don't speak Spanish, I said I want a taco. Uh, I want a little bit of food. I have to follow certain guidelines for the sentence structure. Same thing with C++. You got to follow rules so that the compiler knows what you're actually trying to do. Some of those rules are laid out when you compile the program and for example let's say that you write a, a statement and you don't put in a semicolon because every C++ statement has to have or end with a semicolon. And if you don't put that semicolon, the compiler is going to say, sorry, can't compile this because you don't have a semicolon at the end. And I'll show you a couple of examples on the dev shed C++. Runtime errors. So you've written your program and you're confident that it's going to run and you've spent about two, three hours writing your code getting everything together, following the rules, input, process, output, you run it and boom, crash. Your program crashes. These are runtime errors. So what happens is they happen during execution. Example of this is divided by zero and I'll show you uh, again on the compiler. That's the, the most simplest example that is out there, but there's more. And you'll come to find that once you start coding, almost every day, obviously, hopefully, you're going to run into a lot of runtime errors. And then you have the logic errors, which are really don't, the compiler is not going to figure them out for you. And this is why it makes it so hard to catch logic errors, because these are errors that you have to catch yourself during the testing phase of development one of the errors that usually arise are the ones where you're expecting a certain value for output but you get another value so you have to figure out where you went wrong and logic errors usually happen on the process section of your program they're not gonna happen during input and they're not gonna happen during output output may tell you if there is an error in your logic because you need to see it somewhere but 99% of the time, your logic errors are going to come from the process section. A couple of other concepts that I go through is program walkthrough. So it's good to go through your program and do a dry run. So what does that mean? It means that what I would do is I would trace through the program and write down the variables on paper and then just manually go through and say okay this value is going to turn into five after this line and then this is going to print this other thing very very hard to do it on paper i know it's very tedious i have a section where i teach you how to debug a program and we'll go over this and that you can do that for program walkthroughs the other way to and what I, uh, th these are ways that you can detect program errors and you can detect more along the lines of logic errors 
Then you have echo checking, which you would use C out statements all over your program to see where the calculation is going wrong. Or you can simply just extract a smaller version of your program. If you start getting writing large programs, you may not be able to, it may not be efficient for you to run the whole program all at once where you can maybe run a, a small section so you would cut out a small section of the program and look at it and see what's going on uh, without further ado let me go over these error types of errors and what I've done is I've taken this block of code and I've created the program here for us so let's take a look now if I go to execute compile and run guess what I'm getting this is something called a syntax error so what this tells me is that I'm not following the rules set to me by C++ so let's take a look at what the syntax error is well it's telling me that it's an undeclared answer is undeclared it means that this variable here has not been declared anywhere before my statement what I have to do now is I have to go back and say where did I declare answer I didn't declare it anywhere what I did is I mistakenly wrote a n s w e r instead of a n s r so what I would just do is I would take that do that and see if this compiles and that should compile that's an example of a syntax error now let me try and run this This program is going to ask me for two numbers, and I'm going to enter 5 and 2. Okay. Number 1 is 5, number 2 is equal to 2, and the answer is 3. Okay. Now what is this, what is this doing? It's doing a addition divided by a number 2. So addition divided by this by the actual number of numbers. So what if I did divided by zero? What if I did that? What would happen? Let's try it. Let's try what happens. So compile and run. So I'm gonna say five, two. Oh, there we go. That's what we call a runtime error. So what happened was my program crashed. And whenever your program crashes or halts, you know you've run into a a runtime error. So I'm going to close this. Why? Because I try to divide by 0. So anything that makes your program crash or halt just like it happened right now is classified as a runtime error. Again, these are easy to to find because you can go through line by line and you even comment stuff out so if I commented this line out and I did that then I can see okay I know which line now caused my error because if I put this back in then it's gonna cause that error again again I I did it because I know it others may have to do trial and error so I may want to comment out a block of code so I may say okay I'll start with this section I'll, I'll comment it out and then I'll run it and say 5 2 okay so now you know that nowhere in this section is causing my program to crash and then what I would do is I would take this line by line and include it in my program until I see which line causes that crash now, let's say that this program was supposed to find the sum of two numbers. So let me write a description up here. Find the sum of two numbers. And I mistakenly just go along my program and just mistakenly, instead of writing plus, I write multiplication. Even though it's supposed to write find the sum of two numbers, so let me say I'm pretending now. 
this program will find the sum of two numbers. Okay, so there we go. So I compile this and I say, so it's now I added my first line is the program will find the sum of two numbers. And to the first number, five, and then I go six. And then I, I say five, six, it's supposed to be 11, not 30. And I'm just pretending here, okay? Maybe I was careless. Maybe I, I you know, I was distracted. I, I didn't know what the addition sign was. That's an example of a logic error. I mistakenly am using the multiplication sign instead of the addition. And again, these are harder to kind of find. It's easy in this example, right? But if you're trying to do a couple of calculations, you may mistakenly, instead of doing a plus sign, you may do a minus sign. Or you may not have the correct formula. Or you actually, you may have the correct formula, but you may not be able to translate it correctly on into C++. That brings about the problem of a logic error. Because the formula may say, you know, the square root of 15 times 5. And then you don't know how to represent the square root in C++ because of your limited knowledge. And you try and do certain things like divide it and then do a couple of wacky things here and there. And that's when the logic error co comes in because your program is running perfectly. You're seeing the output, but the output is not what you expect. And that's the, an example of a logic error. And g guess what? The error comes from, your, from you, right? You're coding it. It's your error. So you, it's, they're very difficult to find sometimes. Uh, and this, this comes, it, it becomes more difficult as your programs get larger and as your knowledge expands because right now we, we're not familiar with looping and arrays, especially with arrays and, and just different array structures and indexes. It becomes very, very hard. These were examples of types of errors you may commit that you are going to commit. And remember, the more errors you you commit, the more you're going to learn. I rarely have any programs where there's a syntax error I cannot fix. Where initially when I was learning a programming language, sometimes I would get a syntax error and I would just be on for hours just trying to figure out why the syntax was incorrect. And this is normal. Don't get discouraged. Okay. I got discouraged. I would kind of put it away for maybe the day and then next day I would have a clear head and try and figure out what the syntax error was and this was initially syntax errors now syntax errors are garbage for me again I've been doing this for over 13 years so any syntax errors I can fix in about five to ten minutes but for the novice if you come across syntax errors don't think that you're gonna be fixing them in the next two three minutes it's going to take you a little bit to get adjusted to the language. It's kind of like you're learning the Spanish or English language and you're a baby, right? If you're if you're a baby and you're learning how to talk and sentence structure and grammar, you're going to make mistakes, right? You notice when you know, I just had a, my little daughter, she she's actually two and a half now and she's learning how to talk and her sentence structure is messed up. It's it's horrible, but it's normal because she's just learning how to speak right and then later on she's gonna learn how to write and she's gonna learn how to read and sh her sense of structure will get more more improved with time and that's what I what I appreciate you guys is that you need time you need to code almost every day spend an hour or two hours coding so remember don't get frustrated by syntax errors these are the these are the the initial errors you're gonna commit when you get to logic errors the logic errors are the ones that are really going to drive you nuts. But when you get to that point, it means that you've almost done your work in getting past the syntax, the dreaded syntax errors. Thank you so much. I hope to see you in the next lesson.